I don't want to blow anybody out. Can you give me just look at full volume? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your glory. I don't have that much strength today, but right now, and I just I want to be able to deliver this message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. Did you know that the miracles will still come in the past and how? God's bringing miracles and and bringing deliverances and healings and salvation and even though sometimes people don't see it so they think, they think nothing's going on in the house but it really is. If you have spiritual eyes to see, you know that God is working. Oh, yeah. Brother Kay got a miracle now. That's left to him tell you about his miracle if he wants to. But he told me last night at Brother Alvin's he got a miracle and he's been waiting for quite a number of years and he's been the past and I just want to thank God for that. Amen. And for the miracles that are still happening and going to come to pass for all of us. If we're agreeing together and praying. I love you so much, church. I'm just so honored to be the pastor and be touched by his spirit. Boy, did we have a beautiful board of baptismal service today. You know, there were seven that got baptized and and most of those were children, except Sister Ashley and Ashley. And Sister Ashley just blessed my soul. She just started weeping, and the Spirit of the Lord just touched her. And I, I love you, honey. I thank God for what He's doing in your life. And just can't wait to see what all else He's going to do. Amen. Amen. We're blessed to have our ladies back with us tonight. Oh, yeah. from We've been missing you. We're glad that you're here. Yeah. We know this is not your home church yet. Yeah. But we're glad you're here. Yeah. Amen. I want you to stand with me tonight and open the Word of God up to 1 Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles. I don't take lightly what the Spirit's doing, and you might not get this yet, but. Yeah, they are my grandchildren. And yes, I burst with pride to see them up here on this platform being used by God. Amen. But more important than all of that is that there's a sensitivity to the spirit. That they come ready to sing and worship. Oh, yeah. And it's amazing because it's right on target. Every time oh, yeah. what I'm going to preach. Brother Brazel knows it's the truth. I've been preaching for 28 years and I've never shared the first time what I'm preaching because it's between me and God before I deliver it. Amen. And so I believe that's the way it ought to be so I can deliver it to the people with freedom. But I'm with lucky tonight, girls. Loving God and honoring God and coming to the church yesterday and practicing for hours. Prepare yourself for praise and worship. And there's no telling when we get the rest of the crew and the grand. Brother Braswell might have Ron and company. Yeah. You the insiders understand that. Brother Braswell wants so bad to have a van with Ron and company on it oh so he can travel with them. And, <laughs> because all nine of them have giftings of singing and praise and worship and preaching. And I thank God for that. I don't want to know where they just carry a van with my name on it. <laughs> 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 that sounds right. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> I want to preach tonight on what praise will produce. Did you notice that? That's what they've been trying to get us to do tonight is praise and worship. And the Lord gives me the message on what praise will produce. So I want to preach that tonight. In First Chronicles chapter 4. I'm going to read verse 1 and then I'm going to go down to verse 27. The word of God said, The sons of Judah, Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobel. Now, I don't know if you have the same effect as I do when I pick up the word of God and start reading it, especially with genealogy. I read it because I know there's something there God wants me to get. But those names. This one to get that one, and that one to get this, and that one, that, and that. Does it kind of tire you down a little bit trying to pronounce those names? And I have a strong recorder on my computer and I turn it on 
and I listen to him pronounce it, and I say, I got it. Then I get in the pulpit, and I forget it. So, you know, I'm trying to learn more about it. But there's something hidden here in this one passage of Scripture that will produce praise like never before. Because you understand, don't you, that Judah means praise. And he produced five, five sons. And they all have a meaning about praise. Look down in verse 27. And Shimei had 16 sons and six daughters. But his brethren had not many children. Neither did all the family multiply like the children of Judah. Now, I'm going to read that one more time because you didn't get that. Something happens. Something happens. It multiplies. The children of Judah. What that means is when you get your praise on, things multiply in the spirit. The more you praise, the more you get loose. The more you praise, the more it produces. The more it multiplies. So I want to try to deliver this message tonight if I can. <laughs> because some of you need a breaking in your praise. Pastor, here you go again. You was focusing one time on the Holy Ghost and receiving the baptism. Now here you go about praise. You know why? Because the devil hates praise. And some of you are stuck in a dark valley. You're stuck in situations. But if you can learn how to pray, oh, yeah. it'll produce things oh, in your life. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. you, you can be seated if you can, and oh, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try my best tonight to honor um, God tonight. You might want to get a pencil and paper out and write down what I'm gonna share with you about these names because sometimes when you preach it, people shout it and enjoy it, but then they forget it. I don't want you to forget tonight what these names mean. Because they will literally produce things in your life that you and I need. You understand, don't you, that no no seed can produce without a wound. No seed can produce without a wound. Judah has to have a wound. Spiritually speaking, he must have a wound. What is that wound? It's the church. And if the church will be filtrated with Judah praise, it will break down and destroy any bondage or yoke. You don't believe it? Just look at the Word of God. Because it said they praised in the jail at the midnight hour after they had been beaten, after they had been left alone, still chained. Between prisons, the word of God said they praise. Oh, yeah. In your midnight hour, you need to praise. 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 Oh, yeah. When you're chained and the devil says, You're not going nowhere. Ah. Really, devil? Praise God! Oh, yeah. I'm about to produce something in the spirit realm. Yeah. Yeah. If they can praise him in a prison. If they can praise him in the lion's den. If they praise him oh, in the fiery furnace. If they praise him standing in the Red Sea. Then why in the world don't you and I give up a praise? Pastor, I just don't feel like it. Who does? When they're struggling through the darkest hour of their life. Did you know I'm learning and I've been 60 years now serving God. And I'm learning every day. The devil got an advantage over me many times. 
because I forgot to praise oh, in the darkness. If I can praise him in the darkness, I can shout in the light. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo. Woo. Shut the door from my life. If I can shout and praise in the darkness, I'll shout in the light. It's not just a shallow shout. It's not because everybody's looking at you that you want to shout. It is that when you're hidden alone by yourself and you feel forsaken and feel like God doesn't know where you're at, if you'll start giving out a true praise, it will produce children in the spirit for real. Judah. 
Let us be witnesses for you, God. And most of all, God, bring your favor down in this house. Holy Ghost anointing. I don't know about you, but I don't want to have status quo. I'm not interested in the number. I want it to be packed money over so I can look at the devil and say, you low down line, scheming and rascal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Why you want them sitting in the pew so those that are lost can get saved? Because yeah. you that's in this house ought to be done saved up. My <laughs> I mean, after five months of being with you and I'm not hanging my head down, five months of preaching to this congregation, you should be Things should be cut off of you. Oh, yeah. You should be liberated. Oh, you yeah. should be free. You should be un un unyoked oh, from things that you've been bound up with. Oh, but what happens is her produces liberty. Yeah. That means I'm not waiting on somebody to get up and bring up an emotion in the house. Oh, yeah. True worship is about worshiping him oh, yeah. with all of our hearts. Oh, yeah. So it produces liberty in our life. Some of you have come from Presbyterians and Dead Church of Gods and Dead Assemblies of Gods and Dead Baptists. I mean, we got them. All of us has got dead things. And we are sitting in the church to allow men to tell us we can't worship. Oh my God. Amen. Don't get caught up in the spirit now because at 12, the dead give up their dead. That's why I don't want you to get out at 12 because we're not dead. <laughs> the dead give up their dead. I'm not putting that into the denomination. This is a Pentecostal church. But if you cannot display worship in your life, how are you ever going to help bring down the glory? Oh my God. See, one warrior can't do it, but what about a multitude of warriors? Oh they get to worship in God and magnifying God. Yeah. If they shouted and the walls fell, oh I wonder what would happen to you and I if we shouted oh and the Spirit got on us. Yeah. And what walls would fall? down over our own lives as we begin to worship. Judah is looking for a womb to produce an outcome of multiplied children. And worship is where it's at because God will come to where we're at and meet us and show us his glory. Look at that, it brings liberty. That little Baptist girl well, I was in, in revival at it, Oak Park, down near Donaldsonville, or Old View, near Donaldsonville. She came into the service, and their church is divided in four sections. <laughs> and she came to church that night because her church and God husband asked her to come. And she came. And she was sitting right on this side of the church, and the Holy Ghost started falling in the house. And that Baptist girl, I went back to her and I said, Honey, don't you want God to touch you? Dear God. She didn't say, Let me think about it. I might. No, she said, I do. When she said, I do, the Spirit hit her. Baptist girl did, was scared. The glory of God hit that girl and she took off running around that church oh, yeah. and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost while she was running. Yes. My God. Yeah. Amen. And when she got back to her seat, her husband was going, <laughs> he's still standing there. She received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She goes home and tells her Baptist parents that I just received something that I've never experienced my in my life. Won't you come to the revival? Do you understand that if you get liberated in the spirit, oh, yeah. that Judah will produce a lot of things in you? Yeah. He'll take away the shyness. He'll give you boldness. Oh, yeah. Brother Darrell said he never would have believed that I was shy. He said, I was 
that I never would have believed I said I took an L many a time in high school because I could not get up four feet. But oh my God, I've been liberated. <laughs> when God called me to preach, that was something happened to me. Am I ashamed to preach to people? Absolutely not. Amen. The bigger the crowd, the better I like it. Because yeah. I want to just produce the word in them. Yeah. And so I'm excited about that. Yeah. It liberates you to get you out from where you've been sitting at yeah. to move you to the front row. Oh, yeah. You know, a little bit of change for every one of you would do you good. My God. If you would leave your dead seat <laughs> and come to the front seat, just that change would produce something in you. I wish she wasn't so quiet tonight. I, mean, I wish she'd help me out here tonight. I mean, it's amazing what happens when you transfer from one seat up. What happens is when you move from the back to the front, all that distraction back there gets out of you, and you're able to really worship. There are some people like the back because they can cut up and play and not really get convicted by the Spirit. But if you want to be liberated, you want to get on the front where God can produce liberation in your life. Liberty gives you liberty to walk up to people and say to them, are you saved? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? It gives you an anointing and the liberty of the Spirit. Now I'm taking my time because I want you to get this tonight. Some of you are not writing it down so you're not going to have it and remember it. The other is shovel. That, that word literally means an overflow. Ah, yes. It also means a pioneer. Yeah. Go away, never. My God. Well, yeah, you took the word right out of my mouth. No, baby, it's good. It's my good. God. Go where you've never been before. My God. Go where you've never been my before. Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Ashley, you ready for that pioneer yeah. Yeah. overflow? Yeah. I mean, it's already on you, honey, so yeah. you might as well just let go. Yeah. Oh. Amen. Does it thrill your soul like it does mine when I look at her? Yeah. There's such a light on her face. Yeah. And it's all God's presence. Yeah. You know why? Because she has dedicated herself wow. to get all that God wants for her. Oh, yeah. Now I want to just say this to two people in here. Uh, there, there's an issue you're dealing with. And what is what's happening is that you are allowing the enemy to clamp you down. Oh, God. Listen to me. The devil's clamping you down, and you're sitting there, and you're losing your joy. You're losing your expectation. You're losing what God wants you to have. Oh, God. You can't fight the battle when you are constantly backing up instead of going forward. What Judah will produce if he can get a wound is multiplied children. Yeah. Pioneer spirit yeah. going where we've never gone yeah. before. Yeah. I've watched God in my own personal life take me into territories that I have never been before. What do you mean through the Holy Ghost? And I'm a little concerned if you're still speaking in the same tongues you did when you first received the Holy Ghost. Because the pioneer spirit in you should cultivate a deeper overflow ah, in the spirit in your life. Yeah. You should grow up. I said you should grow up. Yeah. You shouldn't still be a baby with a bottle in your mouth. And a passing and needing birth. <laughs> Look at me, Pastor. Ain't I good? Oh, well, you would know whether you're good or not. I don't know. <laughs> if you're not producing, it's because you're stagnated. Well, I'm just going to preach right here. If you cannot put a praise on, you're either dead inside or either you're immature and nobody has helped you grow up. Now I'm going to say this one more time. 
I like milk all right. But give me meat and not pavilion. <coughs> you take this to the bed. It won't hurt you, it'll help you. I want some mature warriors in here. Oh, yeah. Amen. I said, give me the steak. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, I can take it, Pastor. Bring it on. Let's grow up. Let's mature. Now, if you're still in the same place you were when you first got saved, we need to check you out with the doctor. Because somewhere you're stagnated in your growth. Because if you sit under any kind of preaching at all, you should be growing. Because once you were a baby, but you're not a baby any longer. And I can't think of anything worse in the church than seeing 50 and 60 year old babies. It ain't stink to me. I got my feelings hurt. You devastated me. What are you going to do? If you're devastated over a little thing, what are you going to do when the Jordan starts overflowing? I mean, there's just some place you got to go to that you start praising God for yourself. Pastor can't solve your problems. I can help you, but I can't solve your problems. I mean, I'm here for you. But you understand, you've got to grow somewhere you're saved. And nothing bothers me more than to see a church, a congregation, that is too weak and too babyish to grow up and stand up and become a warrior. I'm sorry, but I know I'm a warrior. I know I'm a warrior. I know there are tough times. I know there are rough times. I know there are times when I felt like throwing my hands up. But see, there's something inside of me that God has done that I might get down on my knees, but I'm coming up. I'm coming up. Because God, you're the only source I have. I gotta have you, God. I want to preach to this church tonight. My love is for you. My love is for you. But don't be baby and babies. Our mature people are still acting like babies. They pouting in a puffin. Pastor didn't let me do this. Get over it and grow up. Some won't even hold a position in this church if you don't get up and get with it. You know why? Because you can't lead a congregation if you're not a leader yourself. I mean, if you're a baby all the time, on the sideline, whining, 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 with the colic. With the colic. Burp, 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 burp. Change the doctor, change the doctor, change the doctor. Uh, Babysit them all night. Cuddle them. Hold them. What are you at, Sister Bradley, while I'm the Spirit, right? Huh. I mean, we're, we're producing stuff in the church that God is not in because we will not stand up and say to people, it's time for you to grow up. And I can say that to people, but I say it with sweetness. It's time for you to grow up and act your age. Where, where are we at? Chosen. Pioneer. Going where I've never been before. That means I'm getting loose in the spirit. So wherever you want to take me at, God, I'm ready to go. I've watched God come into a church and sweep with his glory. And people get drunk. And they didn't care. I said about Brook Fort, Illinois, when I went for that revival. But literally, you could stand like where I'm standing at right here. And that church had about 400 people, I think, in it. Maybe something like that. And it literally one died. When I got up to preach it, it was like domino effects. The spirit fell. And it started on that side. It started falling sideways. It started falling sideways. All the way to the whole church. You know what it was? The wind of the spirit. And they yielded to it, 
and they let God begin to grow them up in maturity. Now, I don't want to have you come to this church every service and say, Church, you need to worship. You need to get your praise on. You need to get past what you're going through yeah. so you can have the victory. Oh, yeah. So people that come in here that are lost can find peace. I'm going to say it one more time. There's two people in here, but you are allowing the enemy to pull you down. Oh my God. Bind you. Chain you. You can't move. You can't praise. You can't worship. You can't do anything because you're targeting in on the situation oh instead of looking to the source, which my is God. God help us. And if you'll praise, oh Judah will produce. Oh Pioneer spirit upon you that you will go where you've never gone before. If this church can get a hold of this message tonight and take it and absorb it and eat it and produce it, the place will not be able to contain its people. You know why? Because people are looking for a place where the presence of God is at. Where the glory of God is oh, at. Yes. Where his presence comes so they can be free of any issue in their life. As I prayed this week and over this service, what I want to see is people breaking forth into new territories in the spirit. Nobody would have to say, will you just get up, will you worship, will you honor God? A good example of what God really wants to do in our life, my brother, my oldest brother is a pastor. Brother Floyd Mahan, if you've been in the church of God or around, you know Floyd Mahan. Brother Mahan is known for the power on his life. I mean, he, the anointing that rests on him. And when he went to churches or go to churches, he would preach the word or he would just stand up and take his Bible and just do like that and they would fall. Mm -hmm. My brother is a wonderful man, but he, he just didn't believe that anybody could walk up to you and just wave the Bible and you fall. So I was too excited when he said he'd go to a revival because I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> and he went that night and he was sitting in the back and hitting the pastor, hitting Brother Lahan just pointed him. He was in the line and coming around. To be prayed for. Yeah. And then Brother Lahan just kind of. You're going to break all the ministers. He was back there quite a distance. He said, I saw him falling in there, but I ain't going to just fall out with him. That's what my brother said. He called. Go ahead, baby. so close to God that we could just point at people and they fall under the influence of the Spirit. I believe that can happen. He's no respect for persons if he does it for Floyd or Han. If you're hungry enough, he'll do it for you. I, 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 I know that I've not preached this much tonight. But if I can get this message across to this church that through the thick and the thin are you facing a dark valley or the hardest battle or you got a shadow on you? If you would just praise God when you come through the doors. If you would just start praising Him when you come in. The victory is already won. If you would just begin to praise Him. If you would begin to magnify Him. If you, see, praise and worship is not just when we have a, 
a great move of God and it just gets on you and you get all excited. It should be on you when you're at home. When you're in Walmart. Boy, wouldn't that be something. Cause a calamity in Walmart. What happened? I don't know. She was drunk and fell out. <laughs> now I know, see, some people don't even want to go there. See, but this is uncharted territory. Wouldn't it be awesome to be in Walmart and somebody said, would you pray for me? Yes, right now. And all of a sudden you start praising the glory oh. falls. I mean, they cuss and swear and everything else. Why don't we pray? Yeah. Amen. We can produce Judah if they can find a wound. We, we can produce Instead of them running away, why don't they run toward God? Now, I know you use everything in wisdom. I know that. But there are sometimes you can't wait to pray for people after they're gone. They, they need a deliverance right then. Amen? That woman I prayed for right there in the beauty shop. Right there. They said, Sister Brad, will you just come pray for this lady? And, and I, I don't know what they thought I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> but when they said, would you pray? I don't know whether they thought I should pray a quiet, <laughs> silent prayer. But oh God, I've done been in his presence. And I went right on over, took her hands, and started praying out loud. And people were in the beauty shop, but silence went over the beauty shop. <laughs> and I felt that thing on me, I'm telling you. I felt the glory of God on me, and I started rebuking those cancer cells. And I commanded that blood to line up with the word. <laughs> and oh, my Lord, when I got through the woman was going, whoo, 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 whoo. Did you feel what I felt? <laughs> I said, what did you feel? <laughs> she said, oh, the heat, the fire. Yeah, I sure did. Did you see that white glow around you? No. <laughs> but I came on a mission. And so I got a text from her yesterday. She said, Pastor, I went back to the doctor and they done blood work. And the doctor looked at me and said, What happened to you? <laughs> Amen. The, the Lord. He said, no, 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 no. She said, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, all I know is your blood levels. They are fantastic. And, <laughs> and she said, Pastor, can I come give a testimony at your church? I said, absolutely. So she'll be here next Sunday night to her yeah. 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 You never know what you're about to encounter. Whether it's in Walmart, beauty shop, grocery store, wherever you're at. If you'll produce a Jew praise, it'll bankrupt hell and bring forth cutting off, dividing favor, presence of God. It'll bring about children. I'm going to challenge you tonight. Get your praise on. See where God will take you. Where you've never gone before in the overflow. I'm going to leave you with this. Because Benita Bynum, when I heard that song when she first sang it, I said, i got to have that CD. And I went right up to Walmart and I produced it and got it. And I put it in the vehicle. And I'm telling you, that woman knows she's under the anointing, and when she sings, the praise and worship came down in that car. And I was so troubled about issues when we were living in Tifton, and I started riding in the automobile by myself, saying I never will be able to handle this. Now I'm gonna just tell you that if you haven't been there, you won't understand this. But when you face so many battles until you are battle fatigued and your nerves are like this, 
and you can't remember from one second to the next what your name is, you're in trouble. Amen. And that's where I've been. That's where I was at. And I got in the automobile and I told Brother Bradley, I don't know where I'm going. I'm just going to get out and ride. I got, I got, I got to get somewhere where I can pray. And I got in that automobile and started heading toward Adel. And I got in Adel and I started crossing over that railroad track. And the Spirit said, turn this vehicle around and go back the way you came. And I said, God, I've already caught that railroad track, and I'm right here at 75. And God said, I said, turn that car around and go back the way you came. And I turned that vehicle around, and when I turned it around, and praise was going into the overflow, I got into the overflow. And the aroma of his presence penetrated the car. I already knew I was not by myself. But oh my God, all the stuff that I had weighing me down, all of a sudden just went out. Because in the overflow, you can spend hours. You can spend hours in the overflow, going to places you've never been before in the spirit. God, don't you want to go there? Amen. I do. Amen. I want to go there. Amen. What's wrong with that woman? There's something wrong with her. I don't know what it is. Mm. Like Sister Martin, when the state patrol stopped her, and she was drunk and swayed because she was drunk in the spirit. And she was swayed, and the state patrol blue lights came on. And she pulled over. And he got to the car, and she rolled the window down. And she was speaking in other tongues. <laughs> in the overflow. <laughs> and he said, ma'am, don't you know that you're going too fast? <laughs> Sister Martin was still drunk. Still in the overflow. <clears throat> he said, ma'am, slow down. Go ahead. You know what was in that car? The Holy Ghost. Yeah. Oh. And the overflow will produce that. Yeah. When men want to stop you from going where God wants you to go, mm -hmm. in the overflow of God will produce stuff out of you yeah. that men cannot stand in the presence of. Think about this. If you're in the overflow and you're allowing God to touch you like he wants to, what can the devil do? trying to dance around to get an entrance. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the overflow. I'm closing, I'm telling you, I'm feeling the Lord in here. I'm in the overflow, so devil, you might as well go you can't get in this You can't get in the overflow where the Spirit's at. What would happen to you and I if we got in the overflow and got caught up in the Spirit and stayed in the overflow all night? What would happen to you? I'm, I'm closing. In the overflow is where God transforms us from ourself to his glory. I want to go, God. I want to go to places I've never been before in the spirit. I want to be a pioneer, Lord, in the spirit. Man. I want to produce things, God, as Judah connects to the womb of the spirit. I want to produce things, God, that only you can produce through my life. And I yield to that. Cause this church to have such a hunger to get where Jesus is at. And they're not ashamed of God. They're not ashamed of you, Lord. And they want to produce in the spirit realm. Things, God, that only can happen as we get connected to the spiritual realm. We lose all of ourselves, our dignity, our pride. Everything that hinders us or binds us is lost in your presence. 
as we allow you to praise to come out of us. Things will be cut off. We will have favor. We'll have liberty. We will produce God in the spirit realm. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we receive what you have for us right now. In Jesus' name. Now, only if you're spiritual, you're going to understand what I'm saying right here. After you have given your very soul to the people, and the devil's standing on your shoulder saying, you ain't done nothing tonight. Because if you get caught up in what people are doing, or not doing in a service, you'll get connected to that lie. But see, the Word of God said, he will not let his word return void, but it will accomplish that which it was sent to do. So I'm believing that you're going to produce. And you're going to say to God, Judah, here I am. Here's the womb. And God produce it in me. Stand to your feet tonight. Only, only God. Only God can produce what needs to be produced in your life. What are you struggling with tonight? What are you facing in the days ahead? If you'll praise God, praise Him. Praise Him. I wish I could say that after 60 years of serving God, that I got this down. I don't. I wish I could say I did. I don't. But there have been some times that the night was so dark until I forgot that if I praised, it would turn to light. There are times when I fought the enemy and I failed God and I forgot. If I could just praise, the devil would move. There have been times that humanity, tiredness, weariness, warmness, caused me not to go into his presence. And not produce. But if you would like to get this tonight, pass beyond what we're feeling into his presence, we will produce in this house great things in the presence of God. Amen. Anybody have a need tonight? You want to get God's attention and you want to praise and you want to produce tonight. Anybody need God tonight? Won't you just come and up here at the altars and just worship God and praise him and let him touch you right now? Anybody? Yeah. Don't wait on somebody to bring you. Pray for you. Lay hands on you. Pray for yourself. Church, pray. Right. 